Hello, welcome to a new series on how to use Blender for automotive visualization. Um, uh, I'll show you guys exactly how I did everything in this scene, um, where to get the HDRI, how to set it up, how to import all the data from Alias or Rhino into, into uh, Blender, um, and also why I moved to Blender, um, why, it, why it's so powerful. The, uh, the, the movie you saw in the beginning, each frame took 20 seconds to render using their EV uh, new render engine, which is extremely powerful, and um, and it's a great it's a great render engine. I've already had a, a got clients uh, with it, and the result they loved it, and it was really uh, it was really nice to use. So it's an extremely powerful tool. Uh, more importantly, it's free. Uh, so so you could just go. I have the link in the description on how to uh, how to download it. It's Blender 2.8. Um, it's not officially released yet. It's, it's going to be a beta version, the one that you that you uh, download. But um, but it's already very stable. It's extremely powerful. So uh, uh, go get that. And um, and yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna separate it into different sections. And right now, all we're gonna focus on is how to get your CAD data into Blender and how to organize the data. You know, using just simple movements, nothing too complex. Just kind of like ease into it. So um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the series. Um, I'm gonna spread it out to a couple you know a couple videos throughout the week or weeks. And, um, and yeah, so um, uh, I hope you guys enjoy. I love Blender. I hope you guys uh, love Blender too. And um, yeah, let's go. So before we get to the fun stuff, we need to get import our CAD data inside of Blender. So we need to convert our CAD data into something Blender can use. Uh, we're going to start with Alias and then after that, move to Rhino. One of the main things to remember about CAD modeling it's that it isn't polygon based. Um, when you do like hardware shading or, or basically what you see inside of your screen, that, it, that those are polygons that are being visualized, but they're based off a, a tessellation. So, um, uh, so we need to figure out how to sort of extract that. And the first thing we need to do for that is um, uh, first we need to analyze our data a little bit. So um, as you see, I always have everything very grouped up and um, I make sure that all my surface orientation is, is, um, is in the right, uh, right spot. So um, uh, another thing we have to figure out is, is it actually mirrored or is it a layer symmetry? Most of the time it's just gonna be like a layer symmetry and to take it to the next step we have to uh, we have to actually flip it over to its side so we gotta go edit duplicate mirror um, and that gives us the actual cad data the only problem with doing this is that if we look at our surface orientation it actually flipped the surface or orientation also so a quick way to fix that is you select it orientation reverse surface uv and then swap both UV and uh, uh, directions, and then reverse all, and then that should should fix uh, our problem. Now, the last thing to that that we need to do before this is we need to sort of merge all of them together. So, in Alias in particular, what that is uh, called is called stitching. So you have you select both of the of the of the objects, then you go to Surface Edit, and then Shell Shell Stitch. So now this gives us a nice little um, sort of joined together uh, group of surfaces. And, um, and once we export that out, they're going to be more in line with each other um, as opposed to if you don't do it, a lot of times the polygons won't be set up next to each other. Another concept to understand is basically distance from surface tolerance, which uh, you can find in your control panel. And if you change that to something very high, like one, we could really actually start seeing the underlying geometry that is, um, or, or underlying polygons that are inside the surface. If you see, especially in the wheel wells, there you could really see exactly where all the polygons are and all that. So to make them finer, uh, first we're gonna take our tessellate into accurate, and then we're gonna move up uh, or access down the tolerance to like, for example, right now, let's say 0.1. And, um, and see, we could still sort of see that there's a lot of jagged edges. And so we got to keep uh, moving our tolerance to something that, that we are comfortable with. And this number is important um, in, in, in a second from now. Uh, but that's kind of what's happening. Every time you move that tolerance, it puts more polygons into your scene. And obviously it makes everything nice and detailed and the curvatures are going to come out really nice. So this is a way to see, okay, what, what, what level do I need to actually do this? 
And, um, and once we figure that out, we could actually export this um, so we could use it inside of a, of a 3D modeling software, any 3D modeling software. So the tool that you could use is FBX and OBJ. And inside of, um, of Alias, I've actually used both of these and they both basically come out the same. Uh, the really important part is there under surface tessellation, you have to uh, click on it and then the tolerance there, that's where you put the same tolerance that you put on the on when you were just viewing it. So this is actually going to export a polygon model that is basically exactly what you see on the screen. This is how you do it with all CAD softwares. What you have to do is find a way to export it as an OBJ or as an FBX that's tessellated. So that's kind of how you find it in another software. So let's let's do this with Rhino. So with Rhino, it's very much the same sort of sort of workflow. First, you need to make sure that both sides are are geometry and it's not like a, a, a layer symmetry. And then we have to stitch them. But inside of Rhino, it's called join. So join them together. So so make sure that it's just one unified like uh, surfaces or oh, well, a group of surfaces. And the same thing, file export. And you can go FBX or OBJ. With Rhino, I actually go with OBJ. And that's because FBX, for some reason, carries the, the camera data. And uh, I don't know, there's no way for me to sort of take that out. But we get a very similar result. So you click on Save. And then this menu is going to pop up. And on this one, don't worry about it. Just press OK. And then here, maximum distance edge to surface. That's a very similar thing to, to what we found in Alias. So if you click on the preview, you kind of see exactly how how um, how detailed the 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 tessellation is going to be, and obviously depending on if it's going to be a very close up scene or if it's going to be like you know a mile away, you could sort of choose how how refined the the tessellation is. So to me, this is way too many polygons. Uh, I've ne I never use this many polygons, like maybe unless you're doing like a, a very, very super close up um, of, of a model, you know, it's not really, it's not really necessary to, to, um, to use so many. So I try to keep them a little more balanced and um, a little easier on my system. So, so something like this is very much what I would do for like a high end movie. Um, and if it's, if, if we're doing like real time stuff, we can even go a, a lower tessellation. Um, because even this looks really good and I'll show you guys what this looks like inside of Blender. So, um, so just remember that, that, um, the, the only, the only difference or the, the only difficult thing is that, is that Rhino, it's units is in millimeters and Blender is in, is in meters. So when you use OBJ, we're going to have to scale it over at Blender. So let's go to Blender. When you start Blender, it's always going to have this cube in it. So, uh, all we're going to do is select it and then we're going to delete it. Um, and right now, all we're going to do is focus on importing in it. So file, import, let's do first the alias FBX. Um, and you just find it where you saved it and, uh, and hit enter. And then there it is. Now, now, that, now that FBX is here, if you click period on your numpad, it'll reorient around the object that you selected. So that's what I, what I did right now. So now let's check out how the OBJ looks like. So file, import, OBJ. And then I select that OBJ. And um, if I hide the FBX, like the OBJ is nowhere to be seen because it's because um, it's way too too big right now. So under scaling, go to 0 0.001 and then do that for all three. And now that's going to change those meters into millimeters. And even though it came out darker, that's just a shading property. But um, but if I open up, uh, if I also turn on the, the shell, you know, we can see we can see the polygons, the density. That's pretty good. And if I turn on the 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 alias one, see, it's an extremely very similar model. You know, they're all they're all both of these qualities are, are very very good. So this is how you import your CAD data, and 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 it's I know it's a bit tedious, but it's a great software, and it's worth the 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 work once you have all your data in. So this will be the end of this video of how to import the data. And the next video will be on how to use it and material and put the materials and all that. So um, thanks for watching.